Why can't the ducks just win a game? What do they have to do? I would suggest they do a couple of things. Number one, fire Dallas Akins immediately because he's a bad coach. And two, score more goals! Well, once again, it's the, cur the curse of the Golden Knights strikes the Ducks, and I just can't stand that team. Ducks lose to Vegas 3-2 to two in overtime. So the next game was against the St. Louis Blues. I, and it was a kind of almost a repeat of the first time they played when... Remember that first game they played against the Blues guys? They were... It, they scored three goals in the first two minutes in St. Louis, and we lost that first game 6-1. to one. After the Blues scored those two goals in 13 seconds, at fourth one off of Rook, Rookie, I should never say Rook, that's a chess piece, Dakota Joshua, that was his first NHL goal, and I was looking, I was just watching that, and I'm thinking... Why those blues? Come on, ducks! Why are you making me? You would make me look more competent if I stepped on the ice in that situation. Okay, maybe that you wouldn't. I would be just as terrible as you guys are. What do you gotta do? At the end of two periods of the St. Louis of the Blues game, the score was Blues four and Isaac Lundstrom one. Yeah! Can you please at least show some effort in the third period, boys? Come on. Did we just score more than one goal in a game? No, they did. We have two goals in a game. Let's go. Holy Isaac Lundestrom stuffs it just barely over the goal line, but a goal's a goal. Isaac Lundestrom second of the game, and it's now Blues four and Isaac Lundestrom two. Bruh. No. Lundstrom scored again? Oh my goodness, a hat trick. Here, Isaac Lundstrom, you can have my beanie. There you go. My beanie to you. You have scored your first career hat trick, and you are the second youngest duck in their history to score a hat trick. Can you... Take a guess at who the other one was, guys. I'll give you one hint. Not Max Comtois. It was Sam Steele, believe it or not, folks. If you remember one game a couple of years ago, I believe it was in Vancouver, he, he scored a hat trick on a pretty unusual play. Uh, I'll see if I can find the... If I don't know if I'll find the footage. I'll tell you what it was. It was a... Broken stick, a Canucks player uh, slid it into the play when Cam Fowler tried to pass to his defense partner. I'm not sure who it was at the time, whether, I'm not sure if it was Bo Schman or Hamp, when he was still with us, or maybe Hampus Lindholm. But they called, by rule, that play a penalty shot. They give it to Sam Steele, and he deeks backhand top shelf on then Canuck goalie Jacob Markstrom, and the Ducks had won that game five to four. Well, they got the Ducks. Hold on. <whistles> Penalty. The Blues. St. Louis number seventy. As two minutes for you can't do that. Okay, it wasn't actually a you can't do that. Oscar Sundquist of the St. Louis Blues gets called for two minutes slashing penalty, and that puts the Ducks in the final minutes of the third period on a six on four man advantage. The six for us is us pulling the goalie in favor of an extra attacker. So Gibson to the bench, the net is empty, drop puck. The Ducks are a little bit, are, can't quite get the handle, so Zach Sanford of the Blues gets it, shoots it, puts it in the empty net. Well, that might have thwarted the comeback a little bit. But on the ensuing faceoff, Ducks get right back in the blue zone, still have the power play. They go jamming away at a rebound, and the captain, Getzloff, gets that goal back. Five to four, Blues now. 
and there's one minute remaining. Can they do it? They battle as hard as they can, but the final horn sounds and the ducks are not quite able to pull this off. So ducks once again lose. And my friends, that is seven consecutive losses for the Ducks, 0-5-2 in their last seven, and the fourth straight loss by one goal. <laughs> Ducks, what are you, come on! Your effort has been there, but I want a full effort next time. I, one period doesn't really do it, you gotta play all three. We're, do we're gonna have another game on Wednesday. The reason I'm shooting this episode on a Tuesday is because I have so much college work to do and I wanna try to get all this out to you before Friday and Saturday when the Ducks go on the road to play the Colorado Avalanche. Also, I have a little bit of a surprise for you guys in this video. This is Angels and Ducks fan, Matt, here. How we all doing? I'm here to do a brief preview of the Angels preseason and the Ducks current and the Ducks upcoming series against the Colorado Avalanche. In two preseason games coming into this day, Tuesday, or Tuesday, March 2nd, the day I'm shooting this video, the Halos are undefeated in the preseason, meaning they haven't lost a game while well, they tied yesterday. But a tie is not a loss. A tie is a tie. They tied 4-4 four to four and they won their first game 5-2. to two. Why not celebrate with another attempting of hitting the baseball? Or the puck, whatever the heck this thing's called. Bruh! There's a good sound for you. Alright. Tonight, Andrew Heaney pitches for the for the Halos in the third preseason game against Cincinnati. He is um, looking to have a better season after building off the success that he had towards the back half of the season. Oh, I'm hoping the Halos will win at least one game in the regular season. I'm sure they will. I wonder what Ducks fan Matt thinks about that. Listen, I don't care about the Angels preseason. I'll root with you when it comes to the regular season. Good job on you Angels fan winning your first two or having a win and a tie. We'll have to, of course it's only the preseason for you guys so we'll have to see how that goes. Yo the preseason matters so much to loyal Angels fan. Are you kidding me? Come on. Well of course in your sport you're different but well, I know you guys are dealing with a big losing streak, and I feel for you. I really hope that you guys do pick up a win eventually. Well, I'm sure you'll get one. I mean, you have your series against Colorado coming off on Friday, and you are historically good against them. Thank you for your word of optimism, Mr. Angels fan. That was really nice. Uh, I hope they do the same. So let's go over some players to watch in the Colorado series on Friday. Let's see here. Players to watch. In players to watch for the Ducks, Isaac Lundestrom, of course. Well, I'm sure he might even score another goal before Friday's game. Again, I'm shooting this early because I have so much college work to do. Lundestrom has three goals in his last five. Cam Fowler has five assists in his last five. Also six points in his last five. And Isaac Lundestrom, again, is a plus two in his last five. So the rating I don't really value as much as I do goals and assists and points. Honestly, I would also say keep your eye out on Max Comtois, and I would probably even say Kevin Shattenkirk's had a couple of assists. He assisted on Lundestrom's hat trick. Um, Getzlaff had a goal in the previous in the game as uh, the first game against the Blues, and for the Avalanche, that entire first line of McKinnon, Landeskog, and Ranton, and specifically Landeskog too two goals in his last five and Miko Rantanen has four assists and five points in each of his last five games and Burakovsky Andre Burakovsky is a plus two honestly that avalanche team is really stacked I 
Well, I love to pl- would love to go off the history that we've had again uh, with them in the past decade. I still think they're going to be too much for the Ducks to handle, but we'll just have to see how that goes as I read the players to watch and the statistics here. As I mentioned with Comtois, he's been pretty good this year. Eight goals, now six assists for 14 points. Now, Ricard Raquel is actually a scoring leader, believe it or not. He has the most assists this year, and he has, wow, nine assists. So two goals and nine assists for 11 points, a minus four rating, what are you doing, and 22 games played. So he's been good. I'm also glad we got Henrique back and not stolen via waivers. And he scored against Vegas. I'm hoping he can make some plays. Um, We'll just have to see how it goes, guys. Um, Predictions? Um, Still am thinking loss. I'm really still thinking loss. I'm going to call a loss in game one of... Let's be bold. I'm going to go with four to three in overtime. And on Saturday, it's a back-to-back. Ryan Miller will likely be in that that Saturday night. Um, We are going to go... Four to one. Um, actually, you know what? Let's go five three abs. We'll see how that goes. All right, my friends, that's it. Please tell me what you thought of that episode down in the comments section below. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and get a friend to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to see these more of these kinds of videos with both Angels and Ducks fan at no extra charge. <laughs> also, be sure to leave your just do that. There we go. Leave your comments down in the comments section below. Be sure to turn on the bell for notifications. I know some people have mentioned to me they've been unable to do it. Um, if you are unable to do it, let me know and I'll see if I can try to help. Um, if, if that doesn't work, um, the post in my Instagram will let you know that I have a new video uploaded to you guys. Well, let's see how the ducks do. I'm really glad as Angels fan in the words of Angels fan, Matt, that Angels preseason baseball is here and hopefully we have a much better season in 2021. All right, stay safe. Let's see if the Ducks can get a win on Wednesday in game two against the Blues and on the weekend series against the Colorado Avalanche. Go Angels and Quacks.